Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Monty. I'm heading back up into the mountains above Bishop, but I want to go see kind of what the boating situation, the water levels are like at Sabrina and South Lake for a trip coming up in a couple of weeks or next week or something. So I'm just going to be fishing Bishop Creek today while I'm up here. I got a late start. I, my alarm went off at 5 and <laughs> I rolled back in bed and didn't get up until uh, 7 o'clock. So I, it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon now. So I'm just going to, I'm stopping off at the second hydroelectric plant. I stopped at the first one. This is the second one at the big trees campground turnoff or big pine campground turnoff. I just saw the sign but I already forgot. But it's at the uh, the second campground up the road is where you find the second hydro uh, dam. Now the road in has a private property sign but this route has nothing and I walk down by the water and there's no private property, no no fishing sign so yeah, deductive reasoning says that it's a go. I got a jig, an eighth ounce jig um, from my barbless kit that I'm going to be trying at the tail race that's coming out. It's really deep. I went down and checked everything out. I'm going to start out with one of those pheasant tail bead heads and we're just going to go see if I can catch some fish. I fished Bishop Creek from both of the lakes up there, South Lake and Sabrina stretches all the way down to almost where the college is down there. So I've, I fish this river a lot. I just haven't fished it much over the last decade. So I figure I might as well go down there and check it out and see if we can get a couple fish on our way up the mountain. So as I said, there's no signage that says you can't go down here. I think they're just trying to restrict the access to that road coming in because it's really narrow and the work trucks have to get in and out. There's the hy hydro facility and you definitely can't go in there. <laughs> but here's the water. I saw a riser, I came down and scouted it. This all looks pretty good. This is a pretty interesting looking spot and I'm gonna see if I can sidearm this out here from this tree. It's probably a better approach from out in the water, but if I can do this dry, I'd like to. So I'm just gonna swing my line out. Oh, there we go. Oh, they're hitting it. They're hitting it before I even had a chance. I'm just swinging it. Oh, there we go. I had to really let my line sink down to get this hit. And it was really tricky detecting the strike. But he was down there. I'm gonna fish this with my spinning rod in a minute. But there's fish down there that are willing to bite. You just gotta get down deep. And I had to let my floating line really sink. And I really had to figure out how I was gonna do this. It's a beautiful fish. This water's cold. I wanna show you what I was doing. When I first threw out, I got a couple of quick hits. But with this, I mean, I really had to let my line go down deep. So I just roll cast it out into the current and I'm just, I'm bypassing any hits I'm gonna get on that drift down. I'm gonna let my line go down really deep and then I'm gonna pull it up straight and just let my nip hang out down in that deep water and see if I can get one of these other browns, maybe something bigger to hit it. There's gotta be big fish in here. So I'm just watching the end of my line. And if it darts down in any, at any moment, I got a hit. And I'm just waiting for that thing to dart just a little bit. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's really subtle. Other times they'll just take it. That guy, I saw my line stopped drifting and that's how I knew a fish had it. It's like I said, anything suspicious. Man, I've been fishing here for a bit. I wasn't getting anything and then I threw on this floating Rapala. So let's go get this guy. And here it is, nice little brown. Get him back out there. So I've made a lot of casts here 
and I fished woolly buggers, jigs, and I'm just not getting much. But I put on that floating Rapala and that guy hit it. Let me see if I can get anything else out in this current. Still working that Rapala. And I had a big flash out there. And then this little guy grabbed it on the next run. Ah. I have to use my net to get my hand wet. I don't want to fall in. I decided I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to get in the water. I don't want wet feet. Pop that right out. There we go, little guy. And with this Rapala, I can get really good range. And I can almost reach the other side. So I'm trying to see if I can get anything to come out. If I got out there with my fly rod, I could probably do it, but I really am not getting a lot of hits over there. So I've made a calculated decision not to get in the water and try to wade out there and sink. <laughs> well, today did not start out with a bang. It started out really lackluster. I put in about an hour and a half down there and I got those three small fish, two on a Rapala and one on a fly. Tried a panther martin for a little bit in the stream section, nothing. So, I'm gonna wrap up this hydroelectric plant exploration. Thank you for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.